it's, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, instead of throwing out in the air, all of the great things you're going to do because you learned from Kobe's passing, sudden passing. How about we just do that? Crazy. I know. But let's just do that. Just actually be a good person. Just actually reach out to folks. Just actually be honest about the fact that, you know what? My life is in a hole right now, but I'm working on it. Instead of constantly trying to make other people feel some type of way or putting other people down. Or here's the one that gets me. Folks who will scream, well, ain't nobody ever did for me and nobody did, blah, blah, blah. Nobody did. Okay, but why are you screaming about what nobody did for you? What have you done for anybody else? And what have you done for the people who actually have done for you? Because nine times out of ten, somebody who screams that no one's ever done anything for them has somebody that's done for them. And they're probably screaming to that person in that moment. And instead of just saying, you know what? I got one person that I know for a fact has my back. I may not have anybody else, but I know I got you. So let's just move on and, and let's cut the dead weight out of my life. Because I'm sorry, I'm a firm believer in not everybody is meant to be on your journey. Not everybody's going to be able to go with you as you go through life. There are some people you're going to have to cut off. And I am the queen of I ain't speaking to you no more. And it's not because I'm trying to be hateful or mean, although I'm sure that's how I come across. But it's because I'm not going to take people along for the ride who are doing nothing but trying to bring me harm or trying to make me look stupid. Like sometimes you have to step back and look at the people around you and say, you know what? I have come out of my pocket for, I have got on my knees and prayed for, I have done as much for you as I possibly can. There is nothing else that I can give you. So this trip stops here. When we get to the next exit, I'm going to have to drop you off because there's nothing else that I can do for you. And you're clearly not doing anything or bringing anything to me. So it's time for us to go our separate ways and move on. And there's nothing wrong with that. But be honest about it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, Sometimes you have to separate yourself from other people so that those people can do better for themselves and you can do better for you. Sometimes your connection to other people is toxic for both of y'all. And you need to go on about your business and they need to go on about theirs. And never the two shall meet again. If I see you in the street, hey, how you doing? And we keep it pushing. We're not getting ready to go and you know, kumbaya and hold hands, but I can be cordial to anybody, but you, you don't need to be a close integral part of my life because it's not serving either one of us. That is fine. That's, those aren't the people that I'm talking about. The people that I'm talking about that we need to reconnect with is, you know, there was, I I saw a post of somebody that I follow on Instagram that was talking about how You know, if she had not spoken to her mother in some years, what the situation was behind it, I don't know, but they don't speak to each other. And after Kobe's passing, you know, she really wanted to reach out to and speak to her mom. And even if her mom didn't want to talk to her, she just wanted to let her mother know how she felt and let her know that, you know what, I still love you, even though we don't have a relationship and go on about their business. I think that's a beautiful thing. Sometimes you need to get those things out, let people know how you feel. Listen to how they feel. For all you know, they may not feel the way you think. And they were just waiting for an opportunity to speak to you. But they did not have fear. Like, things happen. Okay, so she t- she wants to take the initiative and go out there and speak to her mom and put everything out there on the table. And I heard a lot of that. I'm going to go and talk to so-and-so. I'm going to go check on such and such. Or, you know, I used to have a friend and I ain't never, I ain't spoke to her in about 10 years. And I'm going to go ahead and call that friend. I guarantee you only about 50% of us did any of that, any of it. We talked about it because we were in our feelings at the time and we were all hurt. We were sad. We were broken down and a great man is gone and everybody was in their feelings and they wanted to talk about it. And I got to do better and I got to do great things. But as soon as a good week passed, we were over it. We were on to something else. And That right there is society right now in a nutshell. We pick up a cause. We are outraged. We are upset. We are going to do something about it tomorrow. 
and then we're still outraged and we're upset. We're going to call somebody else and see if they can do something about it next week. And then by the time a good two, three weeks goes by, goes by, we're on to something else. We forgot about it. That situation is still bad, but it's no longer our problem. And we moved on. Something I've heard my entire life. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. If we don't find a way to actually stand up and do what's right and do what need, what needs to be done and check on our loved ones. If they're actually your loved ones and have those hard conversations with folks that, you know what, we really don't need to mess with each other anymore. Here's the reason why, you know, no shade, nothing filed against you, but we're just not on the same page. Like if we're not willing to stand up and actually handle the business of handling our business, then let's not get on social media and act like we are. Let's let's not be, you know, the the keyboard warriors. All of a sudden we, we got the third eye is open and all this other foolishness and you, you all seeing and all knowing and you got all these great uh, deep words of wisdom for everybody because it, it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing if there's not going to be some follow through. Now, in other news in the last two weeks, um... I'm going to touch on this situation real quick and I'm going to let it go. But, uh, Miss Gail King, Gail King, I listened to her apology for what happened with the whole Kobe situation and her bringing up the allegation from 2003. Now, on one hand, I can say this for any of us who have not seen the whole interview, there was probably an entire line of question that took place before it got to that point. Um, so I could see if the question was, you know, her initial statement of, well, do you believe this will tar- tarnish his legacy? The problem I have with that whole situation is a, the man is not, e- wasn't even buried yet. Why was it even a part of your conversation? Now, if this were, a year from now and you were interviewing somebody, yes, as a journalist, it's your job to get to those hard questions. It's your job to get certain information. So I could understand that. But this man has not been buried yet. His wife is still trying to grieve, not just her husband, but her child, her best friend, her baby. Like you... There was no reason, in my opinion, for it to even come up in the conversation to start with. Like, I don't understand why that became a part of the conversation. And even if you felt as though you needed to bring it up because you were talking about the history of Kobe since he's been in the game and everything he's done and all the great things he's done. And because you were going through a timeline, let's say that was the case, you were going through a timeline. So it came up because that is a part of the timeline. Then what was the reason when Lisa Leslie, who's absolutely amazing, I love the way she responded. When she tells you, this is not the man I know. I've known him for years, me and him go back, you know, we're like brother and sister. And this is what I know of him. When she gave you that statement, that should have been your cue to say, well, you know what? That is true. You were a friend of his and move on. Instead, you wanted to get pushback on well, I mean, because the two of you were friends, you wouldn't have seen it. And well, it was only dropped because she didn't testify. Like, it's almost like she wanted him to be guilty, even though everybody found out later on he wasn't. He wasn't. She knows this. She claims that she was so close to him. You've been in this house. You know, his wife. And I was it. It's like you were just pushing for the next big story. You know, everybody is still riding high off of, oh my God, Gail King got the interview of R. Kelly and she, you know, she really held his feet to the fire. So now for some reason in your mind, you think that it's okay to just be holding feet over fire, even if there's no reason. Now, I don't agree with people threatening her life. I don't. And I always say, you know, everything that you put out there in the air, be careful because that crap will come back to you. I don't believe that it is correct to all of a sudden um, decide that you want to hide in a bush and snipe her out. Or when you see her, you're going to jump on her, especially when uh, 
certain people are still walking around, you know, threat free. Trayvon Martin's family is being sued. The man who shot and killed him is still roaming around harassing folks on the street. And I don't see nobody trying to put them paws on him. And I've seen him on video out in public in restaurants. And there have been some of my people sitting around. And ain't nobody put the paws on him. You know, there was one hit or miss with a bullet. That was about it. So I don't believe in putting that type of energy out in the air to say, well, she deserves to be slapped. She deserves to be jumped. However, I do believe there needs to be some sort of, and I won't even say apology because there's no apology that you could give that can make up for that. There was just absolutely no reason. Some sort of backlash, which she is getting, but not to the extent of what she's getting. There should have been something though, because there was no reason and I understand being a journalist and I understand the things that you are supposed to ask and the things that you are supposed to do. But at the same time, my mom always told me that in anything that you do, use common sense, use common sense, common sense should have told you that you're interviewing a woman who went even at the mention of Kobe's name, you could see she was clearly shaken. Like she was visibly upset. She looked like she was on the brink of tears. And you thought this was a good opportunity to just throw this in the mix. You were filed for that. That was wrong. Period. But it brings me to my next point, though, because, you know, they somebody posted up pictures of her and Harvey Weinstein and Oprah and Harvey Weinstein. And, you know, all the things that Oprah said about Michael and about R. Kelly and about, you know, uh, Russell Simmons and how is it that they're not holding Harvey's feet to the fire and he's admitted to some of the crap he's done? And, you know, like, where was that that good old foot roasting when he got called out? And this next section is for my people of color. So if it doesn't make sense to you, I'm probably not talking to you. But we have... A bad habit of being upset when people on the outside of our circle don't want to have our backs and people on the outside of our circle uh, want to abuse us and people on the outside of our circle want to use us. However, we don't stop to think about the fact that those of us in the circle are doing the same thing. We attack each other. We tear down each other. We do more damage to each other and then the people who are outside of our circle don't have to do anything but sit back and wait for us to tear each other apart. You're talking about a black woman who decided to look another black woman in the face while tearing down the legacy of a black man and had no problem with it, but would not do the same thing if this was a friend of Harvey's that could, it would have never gone in that direction. And it would have been different if this is something that they're classically known to, for doing with anybody. There was a list of hundreds of hundreds of people that uh, come to find out, you know, folks is coming out and apologizing. Yes, I did this. And oh, I'm so sorry for that. And if she was doing this with everybody, then it'd be like, Oh, that's just a girl being girl. <clears throat> she don't care what color you are. If she's going to go for the jugular, she's going for the jugular. If that were the case, we wouldn't even be talking about it. Nobody would have been upset about it. But that's not the case. And because that's not the case, people are upset. And like I said, I don't feel as though her life should have been threatened. I absolutely disagree with the fact of threatening somebody's life. Like if the best you have is to threaten the life of like a 70 year old woman, then there's probably something wrong with you. But she needed to be reprimanded for what she did because that was just wrong. It was wrong and it was just wrong. You know, everybody is still upset. You know, everybody is still hurting over the situation. You know, when I first heard the interview, I was ready to go off on her. Because there was absolutely no reason for that to even be a part of the conversation. Other people have done interviews. Other people have asked questions. Other journalists have asked questions. Men, women, black, white, you know, They've, they've had interviews since Kobe's passing. They skipped right over that section and kept it pushing to everything else. And I'm not saying that it's never supposed to be brought up. All I'm saying is in all the years that the man was alive, 
from 